What you guys got another PC repair video here for you. This is how to fix a dead computer which won't turn on. So I've got a PC here which is around about three years old and uh, it's not powering on. The person said they were using the computer and uh, it worked perfectly fine. He went to work, come home, turned it on and it tripped the house and it didn't work anymore. So it's a sign that something's blown on this computer. Sounds like a hardware issue. So we're going to go ahead and troubleshoot uh, this problem here. So as you can see, we've got a pretty nice looking PC here. Now this could be due to the power supply that's failed. And if that has failed, it could have taken out other parts on the build itself. So I have tested uh, the power cable that come with the PC and that is working perfectly fine. I tried another power cable and the PC is completely dead. There's no uh, lights coming up on the motherboard. There's no uh, sort of diagnostic lights showing up on the board at all so it is completely dead now the quickest and easiest way to test this would be to get another power supply and bypass the power supply that's in the computer already this will let us know whether the power supply has failed and we can easily put the power supply on the side here and just you know put in the 24 pin at uh, the graphics card cables here and also the cpu cable up here we'll just have to bypass these and see whether it powers on now, sometimes these extension uh, cables can actually foul as well, and this will stop the PC from booting as well, depending on where you bought these. Sometimes you get good quality ones and cheap ones, and they can actually foul over time, and this can cause the PC not to boot properly. So we'll check that out as well by putting in another power supply. If it powers on, everything should be okay, and it's just a power supply issue. So let's go ahead and get this all ready. I've got a, a 750 watt power supply, which I know works perfectly fine here. And this is what we're going to use here. So if you're in this same situation, you definitely want to uh, test your uh, power cable. We call them a kettle lead in the UK, but they just uh, a standard cable here, which you can buy on Amazon. And if this is fouled, then obviously you're not going to get power to the computer and it will be dead. So it won't be the power supply. It will be possibly the cable. So what I'm going to do here is unplug these extension sleeved cables here for uh, the power supply. Now, if these have failed, uh, it still won't power on with a new power supply here. And it could be the cables that have failed. So we'll leave them in situ. And basically what I'll do is I'll put the brand new power supply to these and see whether it boots up. If it doesn't, then we know it's the cables and we can replace them and just use the standard stock cables from the power supply. So let me just plug in my known good power supply cables into these now and swap these around. It would help if I had that round the right way here and uh, get this plugged in correctly. So it's a sign my eyesight is getting worse because I can't see which way the plug is going in. But we'll get that plugged in like so. And that is the CPU. Also, we have a cheap SSD inside here as well. So... We'll do a thorough check on the PC to make sure it hasn't taken out any other components. So hopefully everything is okay. So I need to replace the 24 pin now. So I'm just going to unplug this here and uh, we'll just get this unclipped. It's pretty tight. So just need to unclip this and then we can plug in our uh, new 24 pin from our working uh, power supply into this. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because it just makes it a lot easier. It means I don't have to strip the whole computer down just to test the power supply. I can quickly test it this way. And if it's a bad power supply, I'll just remove the power supply and connect it up to these connectors. And it should be good to go if everything is working OK with the new power supply. So this makes it a very quick job. But I do want to give this a thorough clean as well because it is pretty filthy. And he said it hasn't been cleaned in uh, three years so I am definitely want to give this a thorough clean which is going to take a bit of time so I'm just replacing these uh, extension cables here putting in my uh, PCI Express cables into these two here for the graphics card and this means we're bypassing the power supply for the CPU uh, power cable the 24 pin and the uh, PCI Express cables so let's just plug these uh, cables in here and these only go in one way so just clip these in and we can then give this a test and hopefully it's just a power supply issue. Hopefully the power supply is good enough that it's protected the computer components and stopped it blowing the actual PC. So let's go ahead and get this last one in. We can then power on. Let's just get this last one in here. 
there we go so now we've got all of the cables plugged in we've got our PCI Express cables in and also we have our CPU cable and our 24 pin uh, cable here so what I can do now is plug in the cable for the power supply and then we can give this a quick test to see whether it's the uh, power supply that's failed so let's quickly add in the uh, power cable here and then we can test the computer itself let me go ahead and get the cable and plug it in and then we can flip her over and we'll see whether we get some sort of uh, power to the computer itself so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to switch the power on on the power supply and you can already see we do have some lights on the board which is a good sign and all we need to do now is uh, push the power button to see whether we get power on the PC to power up here and the fans will start spinning hopefully so let's go ahead and uh, push the power button and we do have the fan spinning now and everything is coming on just fine so that means the power supply had failed and we will need to replace the power supply so that's uh, one job done so now we know the power supply has failed so I can turn this off I want to see whether we get display now so let's go ahead and quickly put in the uh, HDMI cable into the monitor to see if we get display here and hopefully there's no more bad parts in the actual build just want to make sure the GPU is working okay and all the other components are working okay hopefully we can get to the desktop here and boot this up so let's go ahead and get the HDMI cable in to the monitor power the monitor up and then we can turn on the computer and hopefully everything is working okay here so let's go ahead and uh, power this on okay so let's power this up now the fans are not spinning up the top and the reason for that is because we've bypassed it with this power supply so these will spin once we get the power supply in and get it all rewired we've got a black screen at the moment and now we have a post screen popping up and this should now boot into windows and uh, let's see what happens here and we've gone straight into the BIOS screen which is not a good sign so I'm just going to quickly see what the BIOS says and you can see here it's not displaying a drive here so it's more than likely that the drive has failed as well and it was a cheap SSD so it's more than likely that that has let go during the uh, power supply uh, blowing up there so we can uh, replace the the actual SSD and the power supply at this stage because it's not being detected I've checked the connections and everything is okay and it's working okay so it's definitely a, a failed SSD so what I'm going to do next is remove the power supply from the computer and we'll also uh, remove the SSD here and we'll give it a good clean and then what I will do after that is put a new power supply in and a new NVMe drive into this which will make it a lot faster and hopefully everything should be okay so when I flip the uh, computer over, you can see we have this dust bunny here or the actual fluff from the carpet that's being drawn into the power supply here. It's drawing air in from the bottom and this has been sitting on the carpet. And this is the reason why you don't want to be having your computer on the floor without any sort of raised platform because it will draw in all of the fluff from the carpet and this will create a lot of heat for the power supply and can cause the power supply to fail which is more than likely what's happened to this one uh, so we will need to remove that so i can see now there's a big build up of dust also checking inside here there's lots of dust build up in the pc which means this needs to be taken outside and blown out with a, a blower and i won't show you that part but i will take it outside and give this a good blowout with the blower and any sort of dust that's left behind afterwards will just be cleaned up with some cloths and uh, some alcohol and stuff like that to clean up all of the fans so let me go ahead and remove my testing power supply here so i'm just going to unplug these which means these extension cables are in good working order and which also means the swapping over of the power supply is going to be a real simple affair of just undoing four screws and pulling it out and just replacing uh, the connectors on there with the new power supply so let's go ahead and get this done i'm also going to remove the ssd here because that is not a well-known brand and it's more than likely just uh, failed so we'll just replace that as well with an NVMe drive so let's remove the screws from the power supply there's four of them here and you can see that dust build up around the back as well so it's a fair bit of dust I've seen worse but again you don't really want dust building up inside your uh, case because basically heat can't dissipate through dust and it can 
cause a major problem with temperatures and things like that. So if it is sitting on the floor, you're probably going to have to clean this out once every three to six months. And yet I did say every three months, if this is sitting on the floor, it's going to draw in a lot of dust, and especially with a mesh fronted case as well. It's going to be even more dusty inside. So let's remove the power supply. And there she is full of dust inside here. And I'm pretty sure if I blew this out, there'll be a ton of dust in there. But this is fouled. And it's another big Phoenix 750 watt uh, gold certified power supply. And to be honest, that is the second one of these that has fouled, uh, which I've seen. And my one I had on my system fouled within a year, which is pretty disappointing uh, from Bit Phoenix. So if you are looking to buy a power supply, I would certainly steer clear of this uh, 750 watt gold certified one. So let's move on and remove these connectors uh, from the PC. And I'll just need to remove all of these connectors because they're going to be uh, for this power supply. And I want to replace all these uh, with the new ones from the new power supply, which I've already got. I'm just going to remove all these cables and we can move on to the cleaning process. Now, I've blown this out with a blower, but you can already see that there's still a bit of browning on the fans and that's dust. And this means that we need to uh, take the fans out and give these a good clean with some alcohol. And that's what I'm going to do here, a brush and some uh, isopropanol alcohol and give these a wipe. Now I've got some uh, wipes here, alcohol wipes with 70% alcohol on them, and I'll use these to clean the fans up as well. And that should bring these up nice and clean. Now this is a bit of a tedious process. And if the person was a smoker and it had some really nasty buildup of uh, gank in there, I would definitely replace these fans. But because it's only dust, I'm going to use these cleaning wipes to wipe all the way around and clean these blades individually now you can use cotton buds or q-tips as they call them in america and pads uh, you know and things like that you want to try and use lint free stuff to stop the lint getting all over the place and once we use a bit of alcohol on here as well this should clean these up pretty well so this was an interesting question about deep cleaning their pc it seems to be a bit of a trend at the moment on youtube where people are deep cleaning PCs. And I can tell you, I've never heard so much nonsense in all my life. So I've been doing this for a very long time and my time is worth a lot to me. So if this person can't keep their PC clean or anyone can't keep their PC clean, then that's going to be down to them. Why are you going to spend three days cleaning this PC for the person to turn it back on and start gathering dust in the PC immediately? It's a bit of a pointless affair, if you ask me. So you can get it to a reasonable standard. I'm using an anti-static brush here to agitate the dust and get rid of it and using these alcohol wipes to wipe off the uh, surplus. And that should be good enough to get these clean. So I'm not going to sit here with a cotton bud getting every speck of dust out of it. Now, again, it's important that you're using anti-static brushes here because you don't want to be using a you know, brush that can cause static and you're rubbing it all over electrical components. That's not what you want here. So just be very careful on what brushes you are using on here. So I've already blown this out and I'm just removing any sort of dust that's left behind here. So I've cleaned these fans up now. As you can see, this is the fan I've cleaned up. This is going to be good enough for this uh, particular uh, cleaning process. It looks okay. There's a little bit of dust still here and there, but that's good enough for what we're trying to achieve here compared to the front fans, which you'll see in a second, which are still really dirty and they're brown. So we'll clean these up as well and get these cleaned up to remove any sort of dust. Now I've tried to blow these, blow these out with a blower and it just doesn't want to remove any more dust. That is as good as it can get. And you can see the front of this mesh front here. And this is a non-removable, uh, you know, filter in here. So this is going to need to be you know, run under a tap to be cleaned because this is really built on here. I'm just going to spray some alcohol on here and then basically uh, run this under the tap to remove any sort of build up here. A little tiny bit of staining, but that will dry out and you won't even notice it on the front. I will clean the front with some alcohol and uh, you won't even see uh, the brand in there or any staining. So hopefully that should be okay. Now, also, I've given the GPU a little bit of a clean up here. Not spent vast amounts of time on it. Just cleaned the, uh, the fins on the uh, fans here, blow, blown out the area inside here. I've not stripped it down. I just think that's too much risk involved uh, for someone who's not paying for that sort of service. If they do want to pay for it, then by all means, then you can do it uh, if you're doing it for a living. Uh, but again, I'm just removing uh, the buildup of dust here. Now, we're going to put in this uh, Samsung one terabyte. 970 Evo Plus, 
and uh, we'll get this uh, put in. And again, it goes in this area here. So I just need to remove this uh, heat shield here and we'll basically put in the uh, NVMe drive in here. There should be a thermal pad on the bottom of this, which we can use to keep the drive nice and cool. So we'll leave that on there and uh, we'll remove the plastic on that once we get the uh, heat shield off. So there we go. We're just going to put this into the PC. Now, these are actually faster than a 980. Uh, so if you do see 980s for sale, then by all means, do buy the 970 Evo Plus. It is a better uh, drive, even though it's a lower number. It is actually a better drive than the 980. So once we've got this all screwed down, we need to put in our brand new power supply. So I'm going to be putting in a 750 watt power supply in here. Uh, this should be plenty for this system. Probably go with a more better known brand here for this build just to keep it uh, nice and safe. So we've gone for the Corsair RM series. This is the RM750. That's a, a full modular power supply here. Plenty of power uh, for this PC here. Room for upgradability and also they can use this for many years to come, this power supply. Just remove this little plastic inside here to protect their little logo and we should be good to put this in. The thing I like about these particular power supplies nowadays is all that power into a much more shorter uh, power supply compared to what they used to be. My other Corsair one, which I was using for testing, which is the HX750i Platinum power supply, is a lot longer than this uh, power supply here. So it just goes to show you how technology moves forward. Fully modular, very, very powerful power supply here. Plenty of power on here as well, which will be ample for what he needs and to protect all of his components in this uh, build here. So I'm just going to drop this into the machine and uh, basically screw it down and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and get this in. And again, it should be a lot more easier to get this in here because it is shorter. I'm going to put all the cables on here and get this uh, installed. I'll have it fan facing down and I'll make sure that I tell them that they do need to make sure that they've got this risen off the floor to stop that dust build up inside here because it doesn't matter what power supply you're using. If it can't breathe and it's sucking in loads of dust, it is going to shorten the life of that power supply. So that's all nicely and snug. So let's go ahead and get these cables all tied down and then we can uh, put the graphics card in. So I'm just going to put these cables back in and uh, that should be it. Tuck these in, give a bit of cable management and the jobs are good. And so I'm just going to get these last few cables in here and uh, we can uh, button this up and then have a look at the PC. Now it's all been cleaned and take a look here. So you can see those fans come up really nice. So the PC turned out pretty nice, nice and clean. As you can see here, put some fresh compound on the CPU as well. Didn't bore you with that process. Just took this off and put some fresh compound on here. Those fans come up really nice and clean, as you can see here. And the beauty of it, I didn't spend three days cleaning this thing. So it looks clean enough for me for a PC. And all I need to do is get some cable combs for those cables because they don't look very nice and tidy. And that should be a pretty nice tidy build once it's uh, all finished off. So if you enjoy this type of content and uh, maybe check out some of my other videos, I've got over 2,500 videos on many different topics uh, to do with technology. And also, while you're there, you might as well drop us a subscribe and hit the bell notification and click all to be notified when we upload new videos. If you want to show your support a little bit more, you can join my YouTube members group by hitting the join button. You can cancel any time. It does cost $4.99 a month. You do get some loyalty badges, some extra emojis, and you will get some extra uh, perks on my Discord server. It's just another way of showing your support for me and what I do here on YouTube, just like these people you see rolling up on the screen right now. They've all joined my YouTube members group. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.